You're watching New Car Spin. This is the most perfect car you can buy today. It is the Land Rover Discovery HSE TD6. Top of the line, diesel. Now, uh, some of you may not know, I have a channel called Diesel Drives, formerly called Diesel Review, where I used to take diesel vehicles from Austin to El Paso, or even Austin to Albuquerque, on a single tank of fuel. This I'd love to do it in, but unfortunately there's a 500 mile limit on this press loaner, so I could get there, but I couldn't get back. Let's let this big truck go by. Okay, this is a 2019 Land Rover Discovery Lawyer, L-O-I-R-E, Lawyer Blue, and it's a seven passenger, three row, off-road utility vehicle. This is the real deal here. Air suspension, so it's actually in convenient access mode. It has lowered down so I can get in and out easily. And if you get the seven seat configuration, which this always would be, it's gonna have the air suspension. You could get a two row, five passenger without the air suspension, and uh, it would be like the SE model. And, and I don't knock people for having that. It, it would be like for people who want the utility off-roader without all the glamour and glitz. But this thing, I, I'm just shocked all around. Everything about it is shocking. Here's the key. You can actually raise and lower it with the key. There's a, a technical way to do it, but it's easy to do. Uh, you set the hazards, you hold down the light, and then this is, while you hold this down, that's up for raising and that's lowering suspension. So. A lot of different features. There's also a, an active an activity key where you can keep the key in the vehicle, go surfing, go hiking, whatever, and then uh, lock the key in the car. It disables the key. Um, too many features to list with that. We're gonna go ahead and get in here. Beautiful interior. Um, I want to talk to you about something first. So let me shut that door. When I told a few people I was getting the Land Rover Discovery, the first thing out of their mouth was, I heard that car wasn't very reliable. Now, obviously, people always say Land Rovers, Range Rovers, they're not reliable. However, my first response would be, because this car is so perfect and so well packaged, and we'll go over all of that, my first response is, are your friends reliable? Is your family reliable? Is anyone reliable? Um, probably not. And the funny thing is, the way this car is, or this SUV, whatever you want to call it, a truck, rig, this thing, who, whoever you are, it is what it is to you. Um, it does things so well that it has a personality like your friend or a family member. And whether or not it's going to be reliable, that, that comes to time. Time will tell. But so far, it's been pretty good to me. And now that it's getting really hot in here, we'll start it up. First thing you'll know when you get in... Turn that down. The sunshades open. So if you had them open, park the car, lock it, get back in, they will open back up. It's very nice to tell. I mean, very nice to have if you can't tell. In Texas, that's a great feature because I don't have to keep pushing buttons when I get in or out or whatever. It's automatic. It already handles it for me. And that's, that's just the tip of the iceberg here. So we have a convenience with the air suspension, we have convenience with the shades for the sunroof. We have automatic climate control, which is kicking into full blast, if you can't tell. And we have different drive capabilities in this vehicle as well. We do have that Terrain Response 2 system, and that will automatically engage different types of off-road uh, parameters automatically. There we go. And so this is comfort mode, but we can push in and it will automatically select whatever it needs to. And terrain response auto selected. There's a message that comes up there on the fully digital display. So I'll show you again. If I take it out of auto mode, it goes into comfort mode and we can see there clearly. And we can go different modes by selecting which type of uh, terrain that we see. So whatever you see in front of you is whatever you're going to select in the system. So I'll just keep it in comfort mode. Now, if you're interested in how this thing is off-road, go watch my video on diesel drives. I'll put the link in the description below. This video is about what it's like to live with for a week. 
So I've had it for a week here in Dallas. I've driven it around Dallas. I've put 385 miles on it, as you can tell right there. I've averaged 22.3 MPGs in the city, which is remarkable for an SUV, full-time, all-wheel drive, 50-50, torque split. It's incredible. I have a 43 mile range though, and I am just on low. So on a full tank, I can do 400 miles in the city. So you're supposed to get like 26 on the highway. I didn't even take this to Austin. I couldn't, um, I didn't have enough mileage on this loan to take it. But I do want to thank Land Rover for letting me drive the Discovery HSE Luxury uh, TD6. Let's get into the price, shall we? So what I have is the window sticker, hopefully. Yep, in my paperwork. Let me get that out for you. Window sticker is right here. Okay. Fuel economy is actually really good because it's EPA rated at 21 in the city. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Uh, yeah. Maybe not. Okay, let's try this again. Sometimes it's hard to shoot with one, uh, only one hand free. I think you get it. No, it just won't figure it out. There we go. So 21 MPGs in the city, 26 highway. That's for this diesel model. HSC TD6 Luxury, Lawyer Blue, Ebony Ebony. So it's a black interior with a light oyster. That's this uh, headliner here is called Light Oyster. I like the lighter interior headliners because if they were black headliners, I would feel a little trapped inside, a little claustrophobic. So this is good for me. Um, now, when I say this is perfect, this is the perfect vehicle. It's perfect ev in every way. Its capabilities far outweigh its limitations. The only limitations I found are two. The activity key doesn't work that well, not as well as Volvo's sport key, and it doesn't have a height adjustable uh, seat belt in the front seats. The rest of this thing, the packaging, the way it rides, the drive quality, everything, the sound, it's incredible. So this is going to be a long video so you can see and experience everything that I'm going to give to you. This is unedited on New Car Spin this year. That's how I roll. No edits. It's real. And if you appreciate this, please like, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment, share with your friends. I really appreciate it. I don't get paid for doing car reviews. Manufacturers don't pay us. They give us a car for a week. I get to drive it and I tell you exactly what I think. I've driven many vehicles this year and this is the best. It just is the best. And I know I did an off-road video of this two months ago, and a friend of mine has a friend in California who went out, bought one, and off-roaded it within hours. That's how good this vehicle is. I'm jealous, very jealous, you lucky bastard. Anyway, here we go. Stickers at 68.8, that is the starting price. And that's actually not the real starting price because this is the HSE Luxury. So you have the SE, the HSE Luxury, and the HSE in the middle of those. So 68 is the starting price of this, which is the diesel. You can get a supercharged V6 gas engine, which is about 0.7 seconds faster, zero to 60 than this. And basically from that perspective, you, you basically save $2,000. So the diesel option is $2,000 more. And then what you get is uh, a vehicle like this, which has better fuel economy, better range, and it's very smooth and quiet. The way diesels drive, it's not what you're used to if you've never had a diesel or what you've experienced in the past. This is just a nice, very subtle, luxurious drive, very quiet, and it just gets up and goes. The towing capacity in here is a little bit less than the towing capacity of the gas engine, and that's because there's more equipment in here. It weighs it down by another 200 pounds. So you're losing about 200 pounds of towing capacity. Um, are you really going to tow with this? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. This is the seven passenger Land Rover though. So it does have a third row, which is very hard to find in vehicles like this. Price overall, $80,915. And that's because it has quite a few options. Uh, you'll see right there, smartphone pack, the last one on the list there. That means Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. We have roof rack rails, 400 bucks, advanced tow assist, a security key, so there's some stuff on here. Heated windshield, I highly recommend. That's this thing right here. Uh, you'll see these tiny little lines in here, which are uh, easy to see when you get in, but then once you start driving, you kind of you kind of look through it and it, it, it's no longer annoying. But this is what it looks like. 
So those those heating elements are in here. By the way, this is also an infrared blocking windshield. So in Texas, this is nice to have. Although you you have to put your transponder for the toll road in this little area here. Uh, the, if you put like a transponder like I have here for a car wash, this little RFID tag, it will not work through this windshield. So this glass is very heat resistant, very UV blocking capable, which is part of what this vehicle is about. $80,000 for a, a Land Rover in a, in a town full of Range Rovers, this is really, really, this is a bargain. And don't forget, like this thing will start at like 52,000 for the SE model. So you can you can literally get away with a car that that looks like this at the 80,000 range for about 56 if you went for the gasoline and without the um the power folding rear seats and without the uh third row, like if you just wanted like an expeditionary style vehicle, this would be really cool to do with just two rows, a whole huge trunk back there, and no air suspension, just big coils. So let me, uh, now that it's lit and we got the AC going, let me go outside the vehicle, walk around it real quick. I'll put it in four, uh, four wheel drive, so regular uh, off-road height for you, so you can see what it looks like when the thing is completely lifted up. And you'll know how big that thing is. When we go here, let's see if we go, I think it's this page here, vehicle dimensions. So this will show us the uh, vehicle dimensions don't include accessories. So like the roof rack that's on here doesn't really include that. But right now we are in off-road height. It's 11 inches of ground clearance. It's seven feet, three inches tall. And, uh, oh, sorry, seven feet, three inches wide. That's what I thought. And six foot seven tall. Uh, for those of you who are not in America, this is what it is in meters, right? So that's the off-road height. If you wanted to see what it's like in other heights, this is normal height, and then we can see it in viewing access height. So if you're in a tight parking garage, you can lock it into low mode, and then when you get to a certain speed, it'll raise up and stuff like that. And you can control all of that right here. So we have auto stop start, we have hill descent control, we have traction off. Um, this is actually, sorry, this is hill descent control. This is like an off-road cruise control. And we have cruise control here, it's radar cruise. We also have this cool button here, limit. And limit basically allows you to not exceed a certain speed. So if I was setting like off-road tires or something and I only wanted to go 50, you could set limit here. And no matter how hard you push that accelerator, you're not gonna exceed that speed. Really cool stuff in here. It also auto steers, you get the little icon there for the steering. I don't know if you can see it with the glare here, but there's a lane steering uh, two icons there. You can control all of that through here. When you put cruise on, it'll automatically steer in the lanes and in the road. It's just fully capable. This thing has, again, a lot of capabilities and they far outweigh any of the limitations. I only found two and I already explained them. Oh, you wanna see something cool too? The packaging in this vehicle is excellent. So we have storage things here for our sunglasses. We have two glove boxes. Okay, they're uh, stacked obviously here. And then we have cup holders. We have another bin in here. We have a spot here for, and this doesn't open all the time and I'm not sure why. Let's see, maybe I'll have to put this on the home screen. Maybe we can open now, I don't know. But back here is a CD slot and it also, um, yeah, typical Land Rover, I guess. No, this is my friend being a pain in the ass today. That's what that is. Anyway, cool stuff in here. We have our cup holders and a hidden secret compartment to put your things. So uh, you learn that here on New Car Spin. I bet you nobody, nobody like Doug DeMiro can show you that. I challenge Doug DeMiro, if, if he's already reviewed this car, see if he showed you that as a quirk and a feature. I bet you he didn't. All right. You'll notice the piping in the seats. You notice my headrest comes forward. It's very, very comfortable, very pillowy soft. I also have a massage function on these front seats. We can control it right here. So you select the seat. I got my cooling on already. Massage. I can choose which massage I want. And I can choose the intensity I want. And I could do it for the passenger. For the rear passengers, I can turn on their cooling seats. Okay, and then for the far back, they have heated seats back there, but I can't control them from here. I can control the folding seats though. We can fold all of them. 
We can uh, fold only one at a time. It's pretty cool. It's very, very trick. And I think every SUV needs this feature if it wants to be a serious luxury SUV. Headrests, we can drop all the headrests. You'll notice the way that they're staggered back there. It means every person in the back has a forward view and um, no headrest is blocking anyone's view. It's, it's just an incredible, incredible vehicle. Now let's get to what I'm talking about as far as packaging, which makes this perfect. Let's let these cars go by. You'll see cars going by, right? It has, for the rear seats, an alert. So there's more cars coming. It will alert in the rear seat if there's oncoming uh, traffic from the, from the side. Okay, let's go. We are in park. I just got to make sure. Okay, this is the off-road height look. This is what it looks like, off-road. Sorry, my camera focus is a little odd today. But at least it's not windy, right? So it looks good. This is the best looking Land Rover because no one's trying to copy this look. There is a Land Rover Discovery Sport, but not, not like this. It doesn't It's not as big as this. Okay, here's the alert, by the way, for the oncoming side traffic. And uh, it'll highlight a little uh, warning icon there. Middle row, very nice. Headrests, great leather, power, recline. Okay, they move a little bit. And then like we have access to the third row, right? So we have a bar down here. You're able to lift and slide the seat or you press this button here and they fold forward automatically. Even the driver's seat moves forward a little bit. Now, you can push down on that bar and slide the seat forward and we have access to the complete rear end. And I have a grab handle here, by the way, which makes it easier for adults to get in the vehicle. All right, let's close this door. I'm in the third row. I have an air vent. I have lights, LED lights back here. I have a uh, third row sunshade, uh, sun, what do you want to call this? Uh, sunroof, but it's the panel roof with the, um, this one, this one doesn't open, but you do have a shade, a power shade. And there's no power shade control back here, but this is how much room I have. And you'll see, uh, compared to like the Mazda CX-9, these headrests aren't past the edge of the, the roof. So in some of the SUVs I showed you, the, the headrests are like against the glass. Here, we still have space. And to me, that's a huge safety bonus, especially if you are gonna travel with people in the vehicle in this third row all the time. So, we will fold back this power seat by pressing the power button somehow. I guess it won't let me do it with a door open, which is, I guess, a safety feature. Can we open it? Yep, okay. So they won't power slide forward, but they will power um, tilt forward, which is, you know, something I'm still trying to figure out here. This is leather back here. There's no armrest, but these are individually foldable seats. And you'll see, we also have heated seats. So third row heated seats, BMW's X7 isn't the first one to have that. I also saw that in the Mazda CX-9, I think, maybe. I keep forgetting. And it's nice to have the air vents back here too. Very nice to have. Um, that's enough of the third row. I'm not really a third row kind of guy. So hopefully there's a car coming, but I can't tell you. We would know though if this icon here lit, lit up. Uh, there's nothing coming. So trust me, it works. I'm just gonna exit right now. Open the door all the way. Ingress, egress, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of tricky here because there's no, uh, you can get an optional side rail, which I would do if I didn't get the air suspension, but because we left the air suspension locked in the uh, high mode, it's a little tricky to get in and out. Okay, so when you move the seat, uh, you'll see the driver's seat and the uh, middle seat automatically recline back to the normal position. So there's an access mode. And of course, with the electric uh, adjustment here, you can move the seat forward. You can also 
fold that row from here. And so with these seats all the way back, that third row will still fold down. Okay, this here is my gimbal case. You'll see we have two map pockets back here, part of the packaging I'm talking about. We have heated and cooled seats here, so let's turn off that fan. We have climate control. We have another pocket here for more storage. Uh, we've got plenty of USB ports in this vehicle. This is just the way to travel. I would do a road trip in this without hesitation. Let's open the trunk. Look how high this thing is up. <laughs> so high up okay now in the trunk we have this little feature here this is uh, standard actually and I believe it's just here to prevent your vodka bottles from rolling out when you open the trunk when you open it with the key though this will fold down uh, if you open it just from pressing that button though uh, here we go this button it'll fold down automatically and of course when you hit the close button it'll fold up and then shut the door but this is what it's like with the third row folded, and we have a sl selection of buttons here that will fold all four seats. It will also lower the vehicle, so like, let's put this against the background there. So now I press that button, and the vehicle is lowering. Lowering, 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 still lowering, still lowering, lower, done. Nope, still going. Wow, okay, that's done. So now you have a load floor that's lower, probably easy to get heavier items in or out, or maybe even your dogs can jump in or out now. So it's very convenient. That's why I love air suspension in vehicles. It makes them so adaptable to the situation and the environment. Now we can fold the middle row. It's just, this thing just does everything. So now, you know, you and your girlfriend or your special friend can really enjoy this vehicle on a weekend. Let's go ahead and raise everything. I think we do that by uh, pressing, pushing this button. Let's pull that. There we go. And we'll pull this one. We'll tell you what, we'll pull these up. Now they all rise at the same time because court is in session. Go ahead and raise these manually. You have to raise the headrest manually. Everything automatically adjusts. Obviously this wouldn't work if you had child seats in the back, but uh, are you gonna have a, I don't know, is this for you? Let me know in the comments below if you would have this vehicle if you had little kids, because this leather, I wouldn't want milk all over it. Anyway, with the seats all the way back, this is uh, where they meet with the, with the actual metal structure or the aluminum structure of this vehicle. And then we will close it. It folds up, it shuts nicely. I think it's time to drive it. This is lowered. Uh, integrated third row brake light in here. And I'll even show you it has fog lights that are nicely integrated too to the front. Headlight washers, fog lights, really cool. So, I hope you appreciate this deep dive on the Discovery. I think we'll just say we're going to discover the Discovery. There's traffic coming and I... Well, I guess every time I try and get something on camera, I can never catch it. But now, now all the vehicles come. That's funny, as soon as I get into the front seat. So, we've been sitting here burning fuel for quite a while uh, with the AC on and... I think it's time to drive it. Let me get my seatbelt on. You'll see this armrest is in addition to this armrest. This is a Land Rover tradition, and you turn this knob to adjust where it where it sits when you set it down, and you can make all sorts of adjustments on it. And this is great if you have something like tennis elbow. Uh, it's actually better if you have a long road trip because then you, you actually have more support for your elbow rather than being like all spread out in the vehicle. You, you now have an ability to be much more comfortable than before. So let's see, we go to home. This is our main screen. We have our options here. We have cameras all over this vehicle. 
You can select which camera you want to see. I have some Instagram posts of this in a car wash. It's really cool. If you're not on my Instagram, you should be. New car spin. You'll see all the new vehicles that are coming up on YouTube because I can instantly post photos of what I'm testing and then I drive it for the week and then I post it on YouTube. So if you want to know what I'm driving next, new car spin on Instagram. Check it out. Subscribe or whatever it's called. Follow me on Instagram. Um, we have, uh, let's see, two forward looking cameras, one that splits to left and right. It's nice to have. This also does self park. So we have a parking feature here where it will tell us, uh, indicate to the selected direction. If we want to go left, we hit the left blinker. If we want to go right, we hit the right blinker and it will, it will tell us like what to do next. We can allow it to search for parking spaces. It's just really cool and it's really nice to have, especially when you're um, just in, a for, in, a, in an unfamiliar area, let's just say that. With parking sensors, we have camera, more camera options. Um, lots of tech in here because it has that tech package. And this still won't open. Trust me, there's a CD slot back there and another little storage space. Let's drive it. I'm ready to drive it. So you just put it in drive and it will automatically select the normal ride height and it automatically disengages the parking brake. And it is so smooth in here. Silky, silky smooth and very, very quiet. And that that slight rattling you hear is actually these headrests that I forgot to fold up. So the middle row uh, headrests, as you can see in the mirror there, are still down and they kind of flop because they're so they're so long. Uh, the leverage is not good for that. Let me actually pull over and put them up because that's going to drive all of us crazy. Okay, so I put it in drive, put it in park, put the parking brake on. Vehicle lowers automatically. And I'll let me get my sandals on. Up, up, up. Okay, and there's an armrest back here with cup holders. Just, I really don't want to give this vehicle back. They're supposed to pick it up today, but I'd rather they didn't. <laughs> In addition to the massage, this seat also has side bolsters like the Kia K900 did where the side bolsters can pinch in, which is nice to have when you're off-road and you don't want to bounce around too much. You just turn this lever and the side bolsters can pinch in or open up. And all of that's a part of the memory, and the memory is right here next to the lock button. So you're going to lock the doors now. Okay, let's get my seatbelt back on. I just think it's remarkable to get nearly 400 miles in the city on a tank of fuel in an SUV with a uh, four wheel drive. Just incredible. And you know, we have 440 foot pounds of torque, 441, something like that. So we have V8 style uh, performance, but we don't have the V8 style uh, uh, fuel guzzling aspect. And trust me, I know this because I own a Dodge Durango RT. I love it. But if I was to replace it, it would be with this. I love the air suspension. I love the uh, the way this diesel just goes relentlessly. So what I'll do is I'll set limit here. I'll set it on the other road. We'll do that. Clear. Nope. Wow. Why would you do that? Jeez, man. for it this is not floored though uh, I don't want to use all the fuel because I still got to have uh, fuel for them to pick it up with 
Although I could put fuel in it, but why would I do that? All right, so we have this limit button here, and if I push that limit button and set the range, okay, now we have 43 miles as the limit. You'll see there in orange. And if I put my foot down on the accelerator, look, my foot's, if I get to the detentable downshift, but if I put my foot down normally, it won't let me accelerate past that speed. So that's for um, like ice conditions and certain things. If you have tires that don't go, that aren't good for that speed, or maybe you just need something to keep you uh, on a washboard road from going too quickly, that's, that's what that limit does. See, I have radar cruise I can set, and now it wants to drive for me or with me. And now what it does is it recognizes the lanes. And as long as I have my hands on the wheel, it will do the steering for me like this. Of course, it won't recognize red lights, so that's where I need to pay attention. Of course, I am paying attention. You're seeing a camera on the road. I am actually not looking at the camera. I am looking ahead at the road. I don't need to look at the camera that's right in front of my face. Um, that was my watch against the glass. What else can I tell you? Oh yeah, let's close these. So you can close the shades in the rear and in the front here. And now they will stay closed, so when I get back in the vehicle they won't open automatically because it was the position I left them in last. The front sunroof does open. That is an option on the HS and the HSE, but this being the HSE luxury, it has all of these things. And you don't have to get it with the automatic cruise and you don't have to get it with the third row back there. But if you don't get the third row, you don't get the air suspension. So just keep that in mind. Um, for years, I've been wanting to get behind the wheel of a diesel Discovery because it was the only third row diesel and it still is the only third row diesel vehicle you can get so this this is a remarkable vehicle because of what they've done they've put their effort into making a vehicle where five to ten percent of these models are actually diesel so Land Rover has the Range Rover, the Range Rover Sport, and the Discovery available in diesel. And I would say, you know, if you look with a business analyst, they'll tell you that 14% of these are diesels. Land Rover told me personally it's 5 to 10%. I don't know what they're going to do because they're going to try and push more plug-in hybrids. But based on some of the electronics, I would say I wouldn't depend on a hybrid. I would depend on a diesel, especially in this price range. Um, you want to make sure that you have efficiency, which you're going to get in here, obviously. And then you want to make sure you have reliability. And I think that reliability with a plug-in hybrid isn't going to be as make as much sense as reliability with a diesel. How about that? It's just this quiet in here. We're cruising along at close to 50. It's a nice day, too. Beautiful day. Wave to the train. Uh, I think I'm going to get lunch, so I'm going to go up here to 1050 Barbecue in, in uh, Richardson. Or did I pass it? I might have passed it. Damn it. We might be able to find it with navigation. Find 1050 Barbecue. I didn't understand that. Please say a command. More commands. Please choose an option. Navigation commands. Say a navigation command. Go to POI called 1050 Barbecue. Choose a line number. That makes no sense. Cancel. Sorry, I missed that. Please choose a line number. Not on list. Say the point of interest. Barbecue. Sorry, I didn't get that. Please say the point of interest. Restaurant. Choose a line number. One. Selecting line one. Not under route guidance. There is more than one restaurant available. 
Choose a line number. Next page. Choose a line number. Next page. We're going the wrong direction. Sorry, I missed that. Please choose a line number. Next page. Please choose a line number. Cancel. Command canceled. We'll just get there on our own. We're gonna make, we'll make a U-turn up here. We have blind spot monitoring. This has everything, of course, at this price. It's up to you whether or not you want it uh, when you get the SE model. SE model does have a lot of options available. You might as well just get the HSE if you're gonna option it out. Now, with the air suspension, when you hit these corners, because it has uh, power 50-50 front and rear, you can accelerate out of these pretty hardy with uh, this diesel. And it grabs well, but the best part is with the air suspension, it just it stays level. You feel a lot of squat and dive when you accelerate and stuff, but this is a phenomenal ride quality. I mean, we're just going over some of these rough roads, like these concrete roads and these expansion joints. And even though I have a gimbal, which suppresses a lot on camera, like uh, there are many things where you just kind of squint or squeeze because you look at it and go, oh my God, that's gonna, that's gonna not be good. And it just does it and you go right over it. And it's like, I don't want to say magic carpet because that's the Rolls Royce term, but I, I would say it's, it's phenomenal. You have, um, it just glides. And that's why so many people in Dallas have a Land Rover. I'm not in the space of uh, Land Rover owners right now. You know what? We could do that. We could do that. I'll make this like a two hour long video. How about that? So all of my big fans, uh, thank you for watching. This is now gonna be a very long video just so that you can have more of this experience. Cause I think it doesn't, it doesn't do us any good to just kind of like limit it to 10 minutes or 20 minutes. I think we should just have the full experience. So let's get on this freeway. Let's go for it. We got a 35 mile range. I can always refuel. Besides, I kind of do want to hit that 400 mark on the on the uh, trip odometer. So technically, I guess you could call this a road trip video. And now we're on the freeway. It's hard to get the camera to pick up the speedometer and the road at the same time because of the the lighting, but uh, maybe that camera angle is better. There's no wind noise in here. We're doing 80 miles an hour. Well, I hear the tires on the concrete, but so smooth in here. We just we're just flying along and consuming in real time down there, 36 miles per gallon. What I want to do actually is um, get a little bit of fuel here. We're going to pull off the freeway, do a quick refuel with diesel, just to prove it's a diesel. And um, then we'll go, then we'll go towards downtown Dallas, where all the Land Rovers are and we'll blend in. How about that? It'll be hard to refuel and film at the same time, but it'll be a first for me to do a live uh, fill up. Hopefully I have enough battery power to make this last. We're already 40 minutes into this video. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But seriously, watch this entire video and tell me, are you not convinced this is the most perfect vehicle you can ever buy? The driving position is great. I have great visibility everywhere. Of course, you know, not when the headrests are up, but you can always, you know, put those down from the screen up here. You can look out, you can see out the corner, you can brake really hard like this. It'll automatically brake for you. This actually has emergency high speed braking and I don't want to try it out. No, thank you. The only downside too, maybe there's a third. So besides the seatbelts and the, uh, the activity key, which is an option really, so it doesn't really matter. So maybe it's just back down to two. Is like when you're in stop and go traffic like this, you cannot set the radar cruise. You have to be like 14 miles an hour. So if you're stuck in really bad traffic, you are stuck with having to drive 
in that traffic. Uh, some vehicles with radar crews, you could just set it right now and it sets a minimum. And then when the vehicles start moving, it will start moving for you. Uh, not in this one. I think the minimum's 14, maybe 10 miles an hour. I've tried it out. I, I haven't read the manual on it. Read the manual on a few other things, though. This is nice. You, you have a sort of like a scroll wheel here. And as you move your finger on here, it raises and lowers the volume. Or you can just press up or down on here. And this is also a way to get into the, to the menu like you have right there. You can get through different aspects of the menu. But for now, we will refuel over here. This place has diesel. Diesel's two fifty nine. So gasoline seems to have gone up. Which side of diesel is the tank on? Which side of the vehicle? It's on the right side. Okay. You can tell by the arrow there. Sometimes you just instinctively pull up. There's a Q7. That might actually be a diesel. We won't know. <clears throat> And then we have this guy. There's always a guy at the diesel pump who's like inside taking a shit or something and he's blocking the pump. So in Texas, that's a bad thing to do because you got a lot of guys here with trucks and they're on the clock and they got to get somewhere and they got to do something or fix something because they drive trucks and they do important things in trucks around here. And then you get a guy, you get two guys who aren't even fueling their vehicles, just sitting there blocking the pumps. So... That's probably why that Q7's going around as well. I bet you that's a TDI, which, you know, they're probably checking us out. Yep, TDI. So, let's see, are these diesels? Mm, nope, these are not diesel pumps. We're gonna whip around one more time. Or, we can just go to the next fuel station. Eh, we'll, go. we'll try one more time. This is a real waste of your time. I'm sorry. But this is real life. Good thing someone like me is very patient and has a lot of time. Is this guy not even refueling? For fuck's sake. No one at the diesel pumps are fueling except for the postman. Stupid. Alright, I'm out of here. I am out of here. And I'm always waiting for the Lexus. The slowest drivers in the world. Lexus and Toyota drivers. I think that's why Toyota made a mistake by taking so long to get the Super back. Because all these slow Toyota drivers have totally ruined it. And they had to partner with BMW to look like they're knowing what they're doing when it comes to making a coupe these days. But unfortunately, you know, like that whole brand recognition, I think Toyota really screwed the dog. Let's go... You're not supposed to swear in YouTube videos. However, I think because this is a Land Rover, uh, I can do that because as far as revenue, I don't think this video is going to generate much revenue. And I really do appreciate all of your support, but I do know that sometimes you just got to cut your losses. I'm actually happy and thrilled that I got to drive a Land Rover for an entire week at no cost. And of course, these are insured by the manufacturers too. So I get to drive a vehicle as much as I want, with the exception of this one being a 500 mile limit, because they want to make sure that all the journalists in Texas get a chance to drive this amazing vehicle. But uh, we'll just head down to the Shell or the Chevron station over here and fill up with diesel. Hopefully they have diesel. Most of the stations in Texas do, unless it's Costco. Yep, there we go. We finally got our please refuel. So, when did that happen? That happened at 393.9 miles in the city, driving the way I drive. Incredible. Now, this isn't a sports SUV, so I don't expect it to be like the pimp dad of, uh, you know, acceleration and cornering and all that. But I, I do have to say that the way it drives right now, I have no complaints and it is on the slow side, but when you're in the city, how fast do you want to go? 
I mean, off-road, how fast do you want to go? You're not really uh, following the intention of that purpose. So this, that's why this is perfect, because for the intentions, it's well-rounded, it's very capable, and if you're looking for a sport one, they make like this SVR version with the supercharged V8 and all that, not in the Discovery, but in the Range Rover Sport. And then if you're getting a Range Rover Sport with 600 horsepower and all that torque, and it's like, what do you, live in Abu Dhabi and you just go off-road in the sand dunes? Because that's really all that's for. Uh, this has more ground clearance. This has more capability as far as hauling things and people. And, yeah. So here we are again. Okay, there we go. We'll just whip around. That guy's actually a truck, so he has a legitimate reason to block spaces but I guess you know like there's an etiquette and I guess you'd have the same problem at the Tesla charging station you know there's an etiquette to like what what you do and and as far as like what your um, what you're blocking when you're just being inconsiderate okay so we put it in drive I mean sorry we put it in park and then we put the brake on but we haven't lowered yet once I turn it off now we lower and you'll see that uh, see it out the side I don't know but we have lowered down so let's fill it up Too. Pay here credit. So normally I would fill up a full tank after a road trip and then tell you how much fuel it used technically. But um, in this case, we want the diesel here. So don't habitually take the gas one. In this case, I'm just gonna fill up enough so that I can get you to downtown and back. And then the guys can pick this up and um, drive away to their next uh, person, the next delivery, which would be another journalist. Yeah, we're at two, oh, we'll put in like five, four gallons. That'll get us 80 miles. That's good enough. Whoops. Kind of parked too far away from the pump. <laughs> I don't need a receipt. Okay. And look, no diesel on my hands. Okay, start this back up. Get my seatbelt on. Rest down here. Drive. And the suspension's raising now. You can see the icon there. It's going up and then it's raising here. It kind of bounces when it's in that access mode. Uh, the Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit that I also drove had the same kind of thing. Like, this Land Rover air suspension's better because it's quicker, but you can do the same thing in that Jeep. And I think they both have the exact same ground clearance in their high modes. And uh, yeah, that Jeep's fantastic too, but you can get that in a diesel, but it's not a third row. 
But there's a lot of stuff that's not on my diesel review channel, which should be but isn't because of what Volkswagen did to diesels, which is really a shame. But the reality is, like, this is one hell of a way to, to get around to town. Let's go for it. Some people need to shit or get off the pot, that's all I'm gonna say. And the speed limit on here is 70. So, let's go for it. I hope this video is 25 gigs. I'd love to upload 25 gigs to YouTube and just say, watch this movie. Unedited, unscripted, perfection, peace, genius, genius work. Brian Grant, new car spin, amazing. That's what I want to hear. I think what's more amazing are my viewers who actually watched this far into a video. Thank you so much. Big thumbs up for that. I think, I think what will happen is we'll play a game. I'll, I'll go towards downtown. I'll go to Highland Park, where the median price of the home is like $1.6 million. Oh, here we go. So we're hitting traffic. I'm going to set... Oh, nice move, asshole. Jesus Christ. Why do people insist on pulling out into a slower lane and then making people stop harder? It's like they want to get rear-ended. And then you only have one tail light too, genius. And I was going to try and set my cruise, so 10 is, I can't set it at 10, but if I speed up to 15, now I can set. So now, it will automatically do the driving, but I'm going to pull out in front of this stuff. And let it auto drive for a little bit. So it's doing all the braking. When you turn it on, uh, you can change the distance you want to keep, but it defaults to 3, so I'm going to bring it down to 2. And now you can actually turn off follow mode, so it's gonna follow the vehicle in front. And I don't even, I, I kinda do need to keep my hands on the wheel, but I don't. So what's this guy gonna do? Is he gonna do the same thing? They're all gonna pull out in front of me. This is the problem I have with Radar Cruise. Sometimes they keep such a generous gap that people just move in, and then you end up getting slowed down because what's, look, the guy's gonna go into the next lane, he's gonna like practically come to a stop, and now look how far ahead everyone is. So that, that is part of the traffic problem, I think, in modern times. Also because I need to set my cruise speed higher. How about that? I'll set it to like 70. Okay, so my cruise speed is set to 70. Anyway, this is just your typical day with Brian. Uh, I'm supposed to be working right now, but I'm, I'm still getting lunch. So it's been a two hour lunch. No, one hour. A one hour lunch. And now I have a green icon down there, which means it's got the lanes and it's doing the steering. It's following the vehicle in front. And at one point it will tell me, I'm not doing the steering here. My hand's here, my other hand's holding the camera. But at one point it will tell me to put my hands on the steering wheel. But this is, there we go. And if I don't, it just keeps beeping. Let's see what happens if I don't do anything. Some vehicles will actually stop. The Mercedes gets a little bit more aggressive with its, with its warning. Oh. I think it just keeps beeping at me. And it, now it has stopped steering. So now I have to do the steering. Okay, and now it resumes the steering. I guess it's more like a dead man switch, but you know, if you had to assist someone next to you or someone in the back, or maybe you like, you dropped your lid to your, to your uh, bottle of water or something, and now you're like, oh my God, you can at least have this set and go do something very, very briefly, and then resume to your driving. But funny enough, we're actually speeding up again, so the traffic is cleared. So it's actually doing this by itself.
and this is not why this vehicle is perfect. I, I'd say that this is a nice feature to have, but any a lot of vehicles do this now. They do it in different different variations of how they do it. But like the Mercedes, the Volvo, all the high end vehicles have it. The the Kia has it. They do it in their own way. I like the Mazda CX-5. It does it perfectly, especially with how it follows people. Uh, some vehicles are a little too aggressive, like the... Uh, which vehicle did I have? And I totally didn't like it. Uh, the Acura MDX. That was terrible. But it was also older technology. So now we have this brand new platform in the Land Rover. And, uh, you know, this vehicle's been out for like two years and they've already updated it for 2019. I don't remember what all those updates are because I'm not very good at memorizing things and it's not like it matters to you because you're not a business analyst, so why would I even share that with you? But look at this. It's like, this reduces fatigue. I can get to my office, I can get to my meeting, I'm not stressed out. I can get on my road trip to Austin like this or Houston and I'm relaxed. I'm totally relaxed. Now what I'll do is I'll, um, Put on my massage seat again. I can change the temperature to all. Whoops. All. Okay. Oh. See? That time I was totally distracted. <laughs> but in a good way. I don't know. I can't find a good camera angle for you guys. I'm trying to get the road and the instruments and the dash and my hands. Okay. What I want you to do now that we're closer to Dallas is I want you to play along with me. How many Land Rovers do you see? That's the game we're going to play. We're going to get off here, actually. Floored. Look at that traffic. It's a Friday. So Friday by like 3 o'clock, all bets are off. By the way, if you accelerate while you're still in radar cruise, it will resume radar cruise. It just won't resume if you hit the brake, which I hit the brake, so I can always hit resume again. I'm glad we pulled off. We actually want to get off on Lover's Lane. Look at those gold buildings. This is just a beautiful city. I don't know why people knock Dallas. It's like, oh, too much concrete, too much whatever. But I think it has a good flow. It's got a good vibe. Don't mess with my Dallas. Don't chicago -fy any city, for one. But don't down-talk my Dallas. It's beautiful here. We do have a map. I can show you the map here. We can go there. We can go to navigation. Uh, this navigation system, it's trying to connect to the internet. There is a SIM card in here, uh, right there. But it's not active. So I'm not getting all of the GPS stuff I should be getting, like connectivity. And I think it's because it did work for a while and then they might have not renewed the trial period. So uh, I would expect it to pull in traffic data and things like that, but it isn't. So it's GPS based traffic, which is Ingrix, and it's not pulling from the satellite. I am concerned about storage space on my phone at this point. Uh, if it does cut out, I'm very sorry, but I hope you did enjoy this trip. Um, please let me know if you want more of this in future reviews. Look at that traffic. Okay, so what I did before was I hit the brake, right? So now we're in this stop and go, and it's like, can I hit resume? No. Because my foot's on the brake, foot's off the brake? Nope. So, um, that's the only limitation here. With all this capability, like, they did one little thing that just went, oh, you crippled me. So if you, Land Rover, if you're paying attention, if you can make sure I can turn this on while I'm stopped. Look, Land Rover, Land Rover. Are you counting how many we're seeing? Because that's what you need to do. You need to count how many you saw in my video and put it in the comments section below. But what I'm saying is if I was able to set this while I'm stopped, now... I can resume without having to do all the stop and go. This is the whole point of Radar Cruise. In my mind, I want Radar Cruise to do stop and go for me, and I don't really need it on the open road. So now when we're here, let me turn it on, please, Land Rover. I know you can't do much about a non-height adjustable seatbelt, but you can adjust your seatbelt height, and that's not really that big of a deal. 
but everyone else has one and you don't. That's really it. That's why this thing is perfect. Packaging, it's all here. Let's see if I can get up to a speed and set it. Boom, set. And that's the other thing too, it's gonna follow the vehicle in front now. I don't know if you can get the road and the instruments and the steering. It's doing it by itself, my hand's here. My hand's here. And it's gonna to come to a complete stop. And I think if it comes to a complete stop, look at that steering on its own. When it comes to a complete stop in radar, it will actually shut the motor down. And the motor will kick on when it needs to for, um, um, I guess I do have to press the accelerator to continue. Some vehicles you can just press resume. Anyway, these, these systems are pretty tricky in some vehicles because they're not all the same. So when you're in my position and you're going from different vehicle to different vehicle every week, you can't assume everything's going to be the same. You can't just assume, even, even among the very brand itself, you can't assume it's all going to behave the same way. So um, I'm just trying to convey all of this to you. This, this is a perfect vehicle because everything I expect to do, it's doing, and everything I don't expect, it's kind of a minor thing. It's not that big of a deal. Some cars, like that Acura MDX, it was just terrible, terrible. But you get into this, you get into the uh, Acura RDX. That's also a great car. It's not as perfect as this, but it's it's a high caliber car. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to fight me pretty hard to tell me that this is not perfect. Here's Lover's Lane. So we're gonna take Lover's Lane, which is probably named after Love Field, which is where. Uh, Southwest Airlines is headquartered. Um, don't quote me on that. Don't really know much about the Dallas area, even though I lived here for a little bit. <laughs> kind of ignorant, but I'm busy. Look at that classic over there. Let's see if I can zoom in. What is that? A Packard? I didn't reset the tripodometer. I probably should have reset that, but I didn't. Um, you can tell we have 107 miles of range, 401 now after the refuel. So we, you know, I would say 400 on a tank in a city, easy. And this is the kind of city driving I've been doing all week. It's a little heavier today because it's a Friday, but this is where this is the path I've been taking. It's not that hard. All right. So in the menu, let's go back to this. We have our trip bank, which is that quad. We can change it to A or B, or we can go to auto. I'm gonna stick with A, cause that's what I use. Content, we can tell it what we want it to see. Okay, um, we'll go back. Now up top, we can change between what we're gonna show in the display. We can change our display layout, which I've never seen before. Two dial, one dial. Well, that's kind of cool. Full map. That's even better. I never knew I could do that. I'm gonna have to do a separate Instagram shot on that. That's pretty cool. So now if we go out of this. Wow. I like that a lot. I didn't even know it could do that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so this is University Park or something like that. We're near SMU. And now we're entering an area where you, you're going to see more of these Land Rovers. It's just kind of like ubiquitous. It's almost a requirement. And it's a lovely part of town if you can afford it. Um, that's why I was actually excited to have this because I can actually uh, enjoy my time here. Not really stick out like I would if I had my Durango. <laughs> Not that the Durango's bad. I'm just saying it's better to be in a Land Rover here as you can tell. There's a great burger joint that's been here for a long time, and I think I'll go there for lunch. There's a Land Rover.
Actually, rather than getting a burger, I think I'll go to like a healthier place. <clears throat> nice G wagon on the right. There's a Land Rover. So I can't really see the speed very well. It's in the center down there, but I, I want to look up top. I, I, I don't know if I can get used to looking very at the very bottom for my speed. Uh, it's not very, very evident. And then they have the speed limit up top. I wish they could flip that. Still though, not really a complaint, just an observation. And this does have the Meridian sound system. There are two Meridian sound system options. And it sounds good. It's, it's, um, I don't know. It's not that much of an option. It's like a couple hundred dollars. It's not like the Audi Bang & Olufsen, which was thousands of dollars. So I think it's decent of Land Rover to offer something where you can upgrade and not have to spend thousands. I really wish I had a couple million dollars though so I can live in a place like this. I would still do YouTube by the way. So if you want to uh, help me out, just keep watching my videos. Keep liking them. Keep watching them again and again. I would really thank you for that. I'll invite you to my pool. So many options. We can change our media. We have uh, source. We can go to serious blah, 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 online media. Um, there is a Bluetooth one. Let's see if I can get to that. Uh, that's my phone phone, which I don't have. Let's see. I'm using my phone to record. Let's turn that off. Oh, I think I wanted to make a left. That's a Bentley Bentega. I might want to turn around. I think it's the other way. hissing air sound is. There must be something going on with my climate control. Let's see. Uh, if I turn off rear, let's go to the seats again. Ah, that rear seat's on. Let's turn that one off. Ah, much better. Much better. Now we can go back to climate and I can turn the rear auto back on. Auto. We'll go back to the front. Okay, we're not really doing a good job here at Land Rover spotting. But trust me, it'll be easy just to pull into any parking lot. I think I might go here for lunch. There's a thing over here called a cupcake ATM too, which is funny. Yeah, 
Alright, what I'll do is I'll make a right. We'll turn around. We even have 3D buildings on the streets, which is weird because these are homes. I gotta say, on these city streets, like when you hit the dips and stuff, it just soaks it all up in that suspension. There's another one we'll go to. This, the point of my video is to show you what it's like just to live with this thing. The way it gets around town. It's just so effortless. Pfft, didn't even feel it. You might hear it on camera a little bit, but inside there's no jostling. It just rolls right over everything. Love it. That was a little rough. So nice. Tell you what, why don't you take a guess as to how many Land Rovers you're going to see, and then we'll look at the comments of however many people actually think they saw, and we'll compare that in the comment section, which will be funny. Alright, so i got to pull out in front of that traffic, and i got to pull out in front of that traffic. Shouldn't be a problem. There's another Land Rover, I think. No, that's a Jeep. <laughs> Whoops. It's just a casual, chill Friday. I uh, hope you guys are having a good time. Hope you enjoy your weekend. If you're watching this on a Saturday or a Sunday, it gives you something to do. Yep. It is hot out there too. 98 degrees as it says right there. Freaking A. Look at that Land Rover, Land Cruiser. Blah. The same Land Rover too many times. I've been talking too much. I got sore throat going on here. I don't know what that is. Land Rover. See what other kind of view I can put on here. Let's see. Display layout. Media? 
I don't really care. Driver assistance, what does that do? I can live with that view though. So let's change it to uh, something a little easier for me. Two dial. Okay, so media. I like full map. One dial. Let's try one dial. Let's see if I can live with that for a little bit. Display layout up exit. Oh, I didn't get that. I thought I got it. Display layout. One dial. There we go. What do you think of that one? Pretty cool. All right, I'm coming up right on my, uh, well, maybe about five minutes away from that lunch destination. So don't give up on me just yet. I think when we get to actual shopping center, you will see that there are plenty of Land Rovers in this town, even on a Friday. Uh, normally around dinner time, though, this place is hopping. That's when everyone's home. But by now, I think everyone's already in uh, their beach house or something. It's pretty slow around here. But as you can tell, just daily driving this, going through town like this, when it stop starts and just accelerates, it's so quiet in here and it's so comfortable with the air suspension, this is the perfect vehicle. It just is. And it's only 80 grand fully loaded. So you can get one on a lower price point and still have an air suspension as long as you get the seven row or the third row seven passenger. And you wouldn't be out of pocket for much. A Land Rover just went by. You wouldn't be out of pocket for much for such a perfect vehicle. Um, it is more expensive than the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, but you have a third row. It's the only third row diesel. I'm pretty much sure of that. Leave a comment below if I'm wrong. And I'm talking about for the United States. Oh, maybe the X5. Da -da -da. But I think this is bigger than the X5. AMG. <laughs> Land Rover, Land Rover. See, now we're on the right side of the tracks. <clears throat> we'll pull into here, which is funny because the like developer here is like they have Land Rovers. They don't need, they don't need an, a paved driveway. We'll unpave it. That's kind of like that'll that'll keep the people out. So more Land Rovers. Oh, we're blocked here. We're gonna have to go left. Another Land Rover. More Land Rovers. More Land Rovers. There is a nice place over here called the Honor Bar. It, they do have a dress code. I have sandals on, so not allowed in today. Look at that Porsche. That's a nice Targa. Another Land Rover on the left here. Land Rover. See, they're all shopping and eating right now. I, where I should be doing, what I should be doing too. Maserati. 
Anyway, I'm telling you, I feel like I totally blend in here. And that's what makes this such a nice place. And I really appreciate... <laughs> There's another Land Rover. <laughs> Another Bentega over there that just squeezed by. I think we'll park it right here. This is a good spot to get food. Ta-da! And stop. Now you'll see our reflection in the glass there, and when I put it in park, lights turn out, put the uh, parking brake on, take my foot off the brake, and once I open the door, or actually, I hit the power button, let's see. At some point, it will lower down. There we go. Anyway, totally daily, totally capable, perfect vehicle, another one. I think that might have been one we saw earlier. Let me know about what you think. This thing's awesome, and I'm not wanting to give it back, but I have to. The next vehicle will be a Toyota Tundra. Whoops. That's the Cayenne GTS that just started up. Anyway, coming here is like every day, it's like a Cars and Coffee, and uh, it's not, but it is. It's really cool here. It's really cool to be here. And I'm glad I was able to share it with you. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. More stuff on the way. Get a Lexus LC500H I'm going to take to Austin. So there's that. Have a good one. See ya.